uh, it's Mother's Day, and I don't want to have to play on Mother's Day. And because I'm thinking of my mom, we're going to sing Do Okay? So I want all of you to join in with me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. In the little way beyond the blue. I've got a house in glory that that shines the sun. I've got a house in glory land that that shines the sun. I've got a house in glory land that that shines the sun. And look away beyond the blue. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine.
looking at me like I have a third eye right now. <laughs> yeah, we all have a mom, right? Does your mom do anything for you? What does what she do? I mean, one thing your mom does for you. She cares for you. What we? She feeds you. Chad. Dishes. I do dishes. Sometimes I might have to go to a bedroom to get those dishes. But I That's right. So you guys, your mom takes care of you, right? Does your mom ever get tired? Does she ever have a headache? Maybe. Does she ever get sick? Who, who takes care of mom when that happens? Because mom takes care of you if she has raised his head. Hmm. <laughs> but no, he does take care of me sometimes. But anyway, your mom can get tired, right? So, kind of like, um, your mom can be the light inside of you, and she does lots of things for you. And sometimes she can be almost distinguished, right? So sometimes she needs help. And I just want you to remember that because Jesus set a great example for us in the Bible with his mother. Because when Jesus was down on the cross, he looked down at his mom and he told John, one of the disciples, to take care of his mother for him. So his mother was very important to him because in his dying breath, he asked someone to look after her. So I want you to remember that, that Jesus thinks mothers are pretty important too, okay? So uh, what I have for you is a little candle that you can take to your mom for Mother's Day. And just maybe sometime when she's stressed out or something, she can light the candle and she can lay, lean back and listen to some music and check she does have no worry. And you guys can do something for her, okay? Let's say a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for showing us how to love our mothers. Be with us today and help us find something special for her. Amen. All right, today is Mother's Day, and I'm so glad that you're all here today. You notice we've got a beautiful uh, bulletin cover that we have today to commemorate Mother's Day. I realize that we celebrate this day, and I realize that sometimes it is a difficult day for some people. Uh, we don't all have the most wonderful relationships with our mother. I just, I just heard recently of a man who had been estranged from his mother, Neither mother nor son had talked to each other for 40 years. And uh, that's difficult. That, that's very difficult. Um, and sometimes, you know, maybe there were situations in life where when we think of mother, it's not all pleasant thoughts that we have. But today is a day that we honor mothers. And so I hope that I am not um, uh, stepping on anyone's toes or causing any hard feelings in the message that I'm going to be bringing forward today because really the message is to honor all mothers today. And specifically, of course, I have to start by thinking about my own mother. I went to see her on Friday. I'm not going to get to see her today. But we had lunch on Friday, and I'm very fortunate to still have my mother uh, being alive and have that opportunity to still visit with her and talk, and talk to her. But those of us who uh, have lost our mothers, Mother's Day is a day to honor the memory of our mother as well, uh, just as we honored Catherine's memory this week with her celebration of life service. Today is a special day to honor mothers and to honor our memories of mothers as well. So the message that I have for us this morning uh, is a departure from the lectionary scriptures. Sometimes it throws Joan when I don't use the lectionary scriptures. She goes, oh, what am I going to do now? And all my stuff is all the lectionary or whatever. But did a nice job with the Mother's Day, so that worked out very well. So the two scriptures that I chose today, uh, the psalm and the, the, the verse for this passage from Ephesians, do deal with the aspect of the importance of motherhood and this vocation of motherhood. And what I want us to concentrate on today in thinking about mothers is to think about, as the message title uh, says to us, the majesty concealed within. Shall we pray? 
Gracious God, may the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The passage from Psalms that we heard today is a wonderful passage describing the fact that God knows us and know, has known us even from the very time that we were a baby forming in our mother's womb. And it's a, it's a wonderful passage, and Sandy Patty bases a song on it that uh, is very nice that was sung at, at all three of my children's baptism. And, and it's always a special passage to me to think about the miracle of, of birth um, and, and what that is all about. And then we move to the, the Ephesians passage that we have this morning, and it talks about the place and the importance of mothers in the world today. That was written 2,000 years ago. Today, today, unfortunately, here in the 21st century, I think that our world tries to tell women, do something important with your life. Right? Do women, do you hear that message? Do something important with your life. And you know what God says? God says, what's important is sitting right there at the table waiting for you to fix dinner for them. That's what's important in life. Motherhood is a great and godly vocation. In fact, the larger catechism that Martin Luther wrote explained the fourth commandment. And the fourth commandment is the one that says, honor your father and your mother. Well, Martin Luther explained that fourth commandment with these words. He says, and I quote, God has given this walk of life, fatherhood and motherhood, a special position of honor, higher than that of any walk of life under it. God distinguishes father and mother above all other persons on earth and places them next to himself. End quote. So according to Martin Luther, in God's eyes, motherhood is higher than any other walk of life. Let that sink in for me. Motherhood is higher than any walk of life. But then here in the 21st century, what does our world say to women? <coughs> Do something important with your life. And remember, I always say God saying, What's important is sitting right there at the table waiting for you to fix dinner for them. In God's eyes, motherhood is higher than any walk of life. You see, in God's eyes, God says this is the highest vocation of all. Think about it. Is there any other vocation that's higher than that of being a parent? Well, I was in education for 25 years. I was a teacher. I thought that was a pretty high vocation. You think that's a pretty high vocation? I'm a little biased. You're, you're a little biased? Well, maybe I was too. Um, but I, you know, I thought teaching was a, was a pretty high uh, vocation. But why does the vocation of teacher exist? Well, I think it exists to assist parents in teaching their children. That's why it exists. Um, what about the vocation of let's, uh, uh, teachers? I think that because I was a teacher, I thought it was a high vocation, but you don't get paid very much as a teacher. But let's think of what about a doctor? Hey, doctors get paid pretty well, right? Okay, a lot of doctors, most doctors, not all of them. Okay, so we think, okay, they, doctor, because they get paid so well, that must be a pretty high vocation in life as well. But what about the vocation of doctor? What is a, what, who does a doctor serve? Doctor serves families. He helps parents take care of the children. The, doc the vocation of doctor may poor, pay more than a parent, but I really think it exists to serve parents and families. What about all those important government positions like governor or secretary of state, speaker of the house, or is president still an important position? I don't know, president of the United States. What about all those government positions What's the purpose of government? Well, in Romans 3, 13, it says the purpose of government is to con commend those who do right and punish those who do wrong. In other words, 
Governments exist to protect and defend families. Governments pass policies that enable mothers and fathers to be good mothers and fathers. Government exists to serve the vocation of parents. There's no vocation higher than that of parent. And even folks who, who aren't parents, who are, or perhaps have already raised their children like me and now have an empty nest and no kids at home, well, well those, those people are not devalued. We still have the great opportunity to help other families through the tangible works of, of service and uh, 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 providing assistance and, and advice, whether that be to our own kids or for our own grandkids, or whether it be the, to the kids and families that, of friends that have children. And all of us sitting here this morning in this congregation have the responsibility to help raise the kids of this church a part of our responsibility. Two weeks ago, we pledged to do that with those young men that were being confirmed and with Jared, who was baptized. And we need to remember that it's not the people who serve in the vocation of parent that are somehow more important than other people who aren't parents at this present time. People are people. And according to Scripture, people are equal creation. And if we confess Christ, we are all equally redeemed. What the scriptures teach instead is that the vocation of parent, the vocation of mother, is more important than any other vocation. And that the proper ordering of vocations places motherhood at the top. But we tend to live in an upside down world. I think most of us realize that. Because our world tells women, well, motherhood can be a hindrance. Children can be a drag for you. They might hold you back in your careers. If you want to do something important with your life, then if you want all the nice things of life, you have to limit that motherhood part. You know, you have to limit having kids and all that. So, you know, um, you need to think about when you're going to have kids, you need to exercise your right, maybe choose to have fewer children or no children, or, or at least no children right now because, you know, there are more important things to do in life. I think we need to hear the truth. Children are not an interruption of a parent's life work. Children are a parent's life work. Every other vocation in which a parent might serve, it exists to serve the vocation of parent. As important as other vocations are, and they are very important, there are many, many, most vocations are important in this world. As important as they are, God calls men and women to serve in all kinds of important vocations. I really believe that. God calls us to serve in all kinds of different vocations, so they are important, but I don't think we should be misleading men and women into thinking, that vocation over there is really important, and this one over here is really important. Oh, and look here, it's a pastor, you know, that's important, that's an important vocation, you know, those, those are all important. What really matters is motherhood and fatherhood, the most important vocations of all. And God calls us to honor mothers and fathers. To honor mothers and fathers. Listen to Martin Luther again on the fourth commandment. He said, quote, it is a much higher thing to honor than to love. Honor includes not only love, but also deference, humility, and modesty directed toward a majesty concealed within. End quote. Did you hear that? That's where I got my idea for this, for this sermon title. A majesty concealed within. That's what we're honoring when we honor mothers. <clears throat> the vocation of mother is adorned with resplendent majesty. But it's often concealed. It's hidden from the eyes of the world. Our world doesn't see motherhood's honored position next to God. That's why so many people today, you can hear them say, I will pursue that. Oh, no, you need to chase after that. Here's what really matters in life is doing this over here. That's why the world keeps pushing what I call family unplanning. 
the world doesn't see the majesty of motherhood. Our society thinks a thousand different professions and positions and careers are more esteemed than motherhood. And our society is wrong. And don't, don't mishear me. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that women shouldn't work outside the home. I'm saying that the greatest vocation isn't found somewhere out there in the world. It's found in the little eyes of that infant that Ricky's looking at right there. It's found in, in the inquisitive stare of that child when they're curious about something. It's found in the hopeful gaze of our youth as they're stepping out in confidence. It's found in the independence of a young man or a young woman who is leaving the nest and leaving home for that first time. Like Sarah is stepping out and doing greater things. And now what is her next step going to be as we look forward to that in her life? Motherhood matters more than any other vocation out there. Consider these words of the theologian Joseph Cardinal Mensetti. This was quoted from First Comes Love, a famous writing of his. And he says this, The most important person on earth is a mother. She cannot claim the honor of having built Notre Dame Cathedral. She need not. She has built something more magnificent than any cathedral, a dwelling for an immortal soul, the tiny perfection of her baby's body. Even the angels have not been blessed with such a grace. They cannot share in God's creative miracle to bring new saints into this earth and then to heaven. Only a human mother can. Mothers are closer to God, the Creator, than any other creature. End quote. Consider the hats that a mother wears. And you all know these. You're aware of that. A mother is a chef and a dietitian. A mother has to be a nurse, a philosopher, a cosmologist, a mathematician, a physician, a lawyer, a judge, a spiritual director, the moral compass, the teacher of discernment, the teacher of aesthetics, the teacher of manners, the teacher of temperance, the teacher of honesty. A mother has to be a life coach, a personal manager, a home organizer, a chauffeur, a referee, the head janitor. The mother has to be an example of faithfulness and respect for her children to follow. Pretty big shoes you're stepping into there, Ricky. Her calling along with that of fatherhood, is the greatest and highest vocation on this earth. I think as the Church of God, it's high time that we rightly extol the vocation of motherhood. And it's time we finally saw the resplendent majesty concealed within mothers. There is no greater vocation on earth. For it is God's chosen means to bring children into this world, and likewise through parents, to bring children into Christ's kingdom. We're going to be celebrating that in just a few moments with the confirmation of another one of our young men this day. And I guarantee you, he wouldn't be sitting there this day if his mother wasn't sitting right there this day. Happy Mother's Day. In Jesus' name, shall we pray? Gracious and glorious God, we give you thanks for mothers this day. We give you thanks for the wondrous majesty which is a part of every mother's fire, which can move mountains if need be and stop entire armies in its tracks. So we ask a special blessing this day on mothers, those who are mothers, those who will be mothers, those who may never have birthed a child but have served as mothers for others in need, we ask this day that you give them your peace, your love, and your strength to carry on in your name. Amen. <clears throat> Let us now respond to our word this morning by rising either in body or in spirit and singing that old great yeah, Rock of Ages, number 
342 in your hand. Shall we rise and sing this hymn together? <coughs> Bible school since boy, well before I was here. Uh, he's been assisting with the storytelling and doing different things. He's active in a lot of different things here in the church. And we're very proud to have him as a part of our church. And it's now that time for him to step forward to profess his faith publicly and to become a full member of this particular congregation. So Xavier, I ask you to step forward right up here with me this morning. That'll be fun. So. <laughs> um, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The call of Christ is to willing, dedicated discipleship. Our discipleship is a manifestation of the new life into which we enter through baptism. It is, it is possible because of Jesus Christ, we have been set free from the bondage of sin and death. Xavier was baptized here eight and a half years ago, something like that. Eight and a half years ago, and we celebrate his baptism today. And with him, we want to remember our own baptism and keep it holy. But Xavier now stands before us as a young man ready on his own to make his confirmation, his affirmation of belief, and to become a full member 
of this part of the body of Jesus Christ. So Xavier, I have a few questions for you this morning, and I'd like for you to respond after I've asked these questions. The first question, Xavier, do you believe in God the Father Almighty? If so, respond, I do. I do. Okay, pretty forceful with that. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Lord and Savior, and accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior? If so, say, I do. I do. Xavier, do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? If so, say, I do. I do. All right, very good, sir. You have now publicly professed your faith. So I need to ask you a couple other questions specific to this church and to this part of the body of Christ. Xavier, will you be a faithful member of this congregation, First Presbyterian here in St. Genevieve? Will you share in its worship and ministry? And through your prayers and gifts and your study and service, will you try to fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Very good, sir. Xavier, you are publicly professing your faith. So now I will ask you this. Will you devote yourself to this church's teaching and fellowship? Will you devote yourself to the breaking of bread with this fellowship and to the prayers? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Very good, sir. Very good. Let me offer you this prayer. Faithful God, in baptism you claimed us all, and by your Spirit you are working in our lives. You empower us to live lives worthy of our calling. We thank you for leading Xavier to this time and place of reaffirming the covenant you made with him at his baptism. Establish him in the truth. Guide him by your Spirit, that together with all your people he may grow in faith, hope, and love and be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forevermore. Amen. Xavier Alexander Moore, you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. Live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and for you. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your heart and your mind in Jesus Christ. Amen. We welcome you, Xavier, as a full member of this part of the body of Christ, First Presbyterian Church in St. Genevieve. Can we all welcome us to greet him at the end of the service this morning. So we'll let you sit back to your mom there, by your mom there, for a few minutes this morning. The balloons are in celebration of Xavier. You can take them home with you if you want to have a party at home. <laughs> have a big party. Alright. We just heard Xavier confess his faith and affirm what it is that he believes. We now, as a body, have the opportunity to do the same thing ourselves. So at this time, together, let us affirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed, which you find printed in your bulletin this morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
we now are at that point in our service where we have the opportunity to give back, to share from our own blessings with those others who may have greater needs than ours within this world. And our ushers are going to come forward, and as they are passing the collection plates, we ask that you be generous, and that you also listen carefully to the very special offertory number that we are going to have performed uh, by a son to his mother and to all mothers this morning as well.
accept these tokens presented here this day so that many more direct lines can be formed between you and those of us down here on this earth so that those who need your strength, your power, and your love may know that it is offered to them. We ask that you bless these tokens now as they are used forward to establish your kingdom throughout this earth. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. For this pastoral prayer this morning, I want to share with you a pastoral prayer for Mother's Day by an anonymous shall we pray. Lord, on this day set aside to honor and remember mothers, we give you thanks for our mothers. We are grateful that you chose to give us life through them and that they received the gift of life from your hands and gave it to us. Thank you for the sacrifices they made in carrying us and giving us birth. We thank you, O oh God, for the women who raised us, who were our mothers in childhood, whether birth mom, adopted mom, older sister, aunt, grandmother, stepmother, or someone else. We thank you for those women who held us and fed us who cared for us and kissed away our pain. We pray that our lives may reflect the love they showed us and that they would be pleased to be called our moms. We pray now for older moms whose children are grown. Grant them joy and satisfaction for a job well done. We pray for the new moms experiencing changes they could never predict. Grant them rest and peace as they trust you for the future. We pray for all pregnant women who will soon be moms. Grant them patience and good counsel in the coming months. We pray for moms who face the demands of single parenthood. Grant them strength and wisdom. We pray for moms who enjoy financial abundance. Grant them time to share with their families. And we pray for those moms who may be raising their children in poverty. Grant them relief and justice. We pray for stepmoms. Grant them patience and understanding and love. We pray for moms who are separated from their children. Grant them faith and hope. We pray for moms in marriages that are in crisis. Grant them support and insight. We pray for moms who have lost their children. Grant them comfort in the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And our God, continue to be with us now as together we repeat the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us now rise together one last time, either in body or in spirit, and sing together our closing hymn, which is, Lord, I lift your name on high, and I will come to in your hymn. Shall we rise and sing this closing hymn?
A special blessing on all mothers this day. And a special thanks to our mother Sharon over here who <laughs> sacrificed her Mother's Day tradition and instead of being at the zoo is here with us today because we didn't find anyone else to play this morning. So thank you very much for being with us today, Sharon. Xavier, remember, these are your balloons. You can take them with you and have a party when we get home. Uh, I don't know. No, Harper's probably too young to have one, so we, we won't be around. Okay, that'll be fine. We do have some roses around. If you'd like to take a white rose or, or take a rose and present it to a mother, there's another a bouquet of them back near the back as well. Feel free to do so. I hope you have a great and a blessed Mother's Day. It is a beautiful day today. I hope you have a great week this week. And whatever you're doing, wherever you are, remember that God is right there with you. Because whatever you're doing, God, He's always right above us. God is always below us. God always goes behind us. God always is before us. God always is right beside us. And most importantly of all, when you most need God, God is inside you as well. Have a great week. Go in peace this day, my friends. Amen. Amen.